On New Year's Day, people in Japan eat a colourful assortment of food served in boxes. It's called osechi. Traditionally, everything is prepared at home. But today, many choose to buy ready-made osechi sets instead. Despite the westernization of Japanese lifestyles, the osechi custom shows no signs of fading. It's evidence of the importance that Japan attaches to the dawn of a new year. This time, our theme is osechi. We explore the little-known history of this quintessentially Japanese culinary tradition. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. One big feature of the New Year's celebrations in Japan is a form of traditional cuisine called osechi. It's not one dish, rather a collection of small portions of a number of different things packed into a box and generally enjoyed by a family. And a number of those dishes are things that you really only see at New Year's. In that sense, I'm reminded of Christmases I spent as a kid in London, where you would always get Christmas pudding. That's something you'd only ever see at Christmas. And to anybody who's not from Britain, it's almost impossible to explain what it is. Some of the ingredients in your sechi would seem fairly strange to anybody who's not familiar with Japanese culture. But don't worry, by the end of today's program, you'll be an expert. Japanese families get together to celebrate the start of a new year, and osechi is a key feature of the occasion. In the preceding weeks, people go shopping for ingredients and supplies. I'm in the food floor of a department store where they have a whole section devoted to osechi. Let's see what they've got. There's quite a lot. In fact, this department store has over 350 different varieties. In this section, we have the most typical types, featuring well-matched combinations of traditional items. The packaging is modelled on formal food boxes, the kind of boxes that are commonly used. Typically for how many people? Just count the number of prawns. That's the quickest way to tell. You could see how many people it's for by the number of prawns. One, two, three, four, five prawns. So it's for five people. Okay. Modern osechi isn't limited to Japanese cuisine. The products in this section were created by chefs at famous restaurants. They offer a wonderful balance of Japanese, Chinese and Western food. Some of them feature huge servings of meat. Which price range is the most popular? Oh, they go from 10,000 yen to over 110,000 yen. Whoa, OK. Osechi is typically served in a multi-tiered set of boxes. The design represents repeated good fortune and is seen as auspicious. It's the perfect showcase for the colorful visual appeal of Japanese cooking. Each layer has its own theme. The box on top is said to be the face of Osechi. It is filled with traditional appetizers. The second box contains sweetened dishes, which can be traced back to a time when sugar was very precious. The third box contains food from the sea, such as grilled fish. The fourth box contains food from the fields, typically simmered in soy sauce. Our guest is food history expert Ayao Okumura, a leading authority on osechi cuisine. He's also a talented chef. This all looks absolutely beautiful. Did you make this all yourself? Yes, I made everything from scratch. Wow. 
I decided to focus on foods that have been mainstays in my own home over the years. Mm. I've been eating osechi at New Year's for more years than I care to remember, I think. So most of this is very, very familiar. On the other hand, I don't think I've ever really thought about its roots very much. So perhaps you can tell us something about that to start off with. In Japan, the New Year is a time when the household deity who looks after us through the year comes to be with us. The deity confers blessings and good fortune on us. Mm. You eat together with the deity. As you eat, you can communicate a wish. Mm. Whether it's for a good harvest, or safety, or health. Mm -hmm. Some people pray to get into university. Everyone has their own request. The idea is that because you're sharing a meal with the household deity, your request will be considered favorably. And there's another important aspect to the occasion. Many people work a long way from the ancestral home. Mm -hmm. Families don't often gather to enjoy a meal. But in this respect, too, the new year is special. Mm -hmm. People do get together. It's a bit like Christmas in Europe. Yes, it's similar to Christmas. People share a meal prepared in the family kitchen. They sit down to eat it together. That facilitates communication. Sharing a meal engenders a sense of emotional harmony. There's a phrase for it, ichi mi do shin. Mm. Japanese people like to have these little expressions in four Chinese characters, don't they? At any rate, osechi is very important as a way to generate family communication. Mm, 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 mm. You can't get angry when you're eating something delicious. <laughs> it brings people together. And of course, a little sake helps. I knew there was something missing. Yes. But anyway, when people eat together, they become one. It's a way to unite people. Mm. And this doesn't apply only to a single family, but to society as a whole. The nation is united. The new year brings Japan together. Oh. The first thing to note is that every item is there for a reason. It has a meaning. Kuai, for example, it's an aquatic vegetable. You can see the protruding stems, they represent growth and success in the coming year. Prawns are curved like an old person's back. They represent long life. You can look through the holes in lotus root. And that represents a good outlook. Do you think all Japanese people are aware of that significance? By and large, yes. Hmm. I was going to ask you, I mean, I know there are regional differences with regards to some things, but how much regional difference is there with regard to osechi? There's one thing where you see a lot of variety, and that's the fish. Japan is surrounded by the ocean, so we have an incredible number of different species. Mm. When it comes to fish for osechi, each region has its own preferences. For Western Japan, yellowtail or sea bream. In Japanese, bream is tai. You can hear tai in the word meditai, congratulatory, auspicious, auspicious, as it were. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Another pun. Eastern Japan prefers salmon. The difference is clear. Osechi became an established custom in the early 19th century. Some items have been a constant nationwide presence since that time. Baby sardines and herring roe are two examples. Black soybeans are another. Please enjoy the food. 
Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Pleasure. All right. I'm going to go for some of the very traditional things first. A couple of beans. And I'm going to take some of this herring roe as well. Because these are things you inevitably get with osechi. So let's start with one of the beans. Mmm. They're not as sweet as they sometimes. Sometimes they're really sweet and they come with this very, very sweet sauce. These ones are not so sweet. Mmm, it's delicious. Yes. Actually, I wanted to preserve the natural taste of the beans. And then these are little baby sardines, aren't they? Mmm. Oh, that's even crunchier than they normally are. These foods are eaten all across Japan. And what's more, they always have been. That strikes me as intriguing. Today, information is so easily shared. Mm. But what about in the past? My theory is that in the 17th to 19th centuries, the Edo period shoguns were behind this selection. Really? In what way? Herring roe is made up of thousands of eggs. Ah. So it represents large families. I think it was a subtle instruction to have more children and in that way, ultimately, to increase the workforce. Ah, it's, it's government propaganda. Good Lord. Ah. And black soybeans are good for your health. Mm -hmm. Next, dried sardines. They were once mm -hmm. used as fertilizer for rice and other crops. These were once very cheap foods. Herring roe is now an expensive delicacy. Oh. But back then, that too was used as fertilizer. I believe it also became part of the shogunate's strategy. What I mean is, I think they wanted to encourage frugality and hard work, and healthy people work harder, much harder. Oh. And so for decades, that's how we lived. Yeah, in your generation and to an extent, I mean, when I first came to Japan, you used to hear those expressions fairly regularly. Not so much now, I think. Well, these days, life is almost too easy. We have all sorts of food. If you have the money, you can buy anything you want. Hmm. The situation now is very different. Words like frugality and hard work have become a bit old-fashioned. Hmm. But I think they're still very important as part of Japanese identity. Hmm. If we keep those ideals close to our hearts in Japan, hmm. we'll be able to enrich ourselves and in that way have a positive influence on the world. Oh. Okamura researches Japan's food history using old books and documents. He has learned, for example, that the idea of serving osechi in multi-tiered boxes came from wedding celebrations. Originally, auspicious meals were served at various times of year to mark the changing seasons. Today, osechi is a prominent example of a seasonal custom that remains embedded in Japanese society. Another is the first visit to a shrine or temple. But why is the beginning of the year so significant in Japan? January the 1st is the most important day of the year. Mm -hmm. It's the point at which traditionally you age one more year, one year and then the next. The new year is a milestone, telling us that the annual cycle has begun again. That became the foundation for the Japanese perception of time. For a long time, Japanese people didn't have birthday parties, for example. They didn't celebrate their birthday so much as everybody became a year older on January the 1st. So that's all part of the same uh, tradition, I suppose. That's right. In the past, 
Japan used the lunar calendar. Under that system, the new year heralded the arrival of spring. And in spring, plants begin to sprout. Trees come into bud, flowers bloom, life is created anew. In the same way, people were seen as being reborn. Human life coexisted with the cycles of the natural world. People considered the year to end at the moment when the sun set on the last day of the year. And then the new year began. Ah, uh, okay. Uh. After sunset on that day, people ate a special meal to celebrate. Mm. And what kind of, would that be this kind of food? In most cases, the meal was based around fish. After that, people would wash and get ready to go to a local shrine or temple. It was a form of spiritual practice. When the temple bell sounded for the last time on that evening, everything was reset. You were born anew. It was a ritual enactment of death and rebirth. That's how it would be described in anthropology, at least. And this is the Japanese view of the new year. Hi, I'm Matt Alt, and this is Plus One. When you talk about osechi, of course the ingredients are important, but so too are the chopsticks. And that's what we're going to check out on today's episode. Follow me for a closer look. Matt is visiting a long-established shop that specializes in uncoated wooden chopsticks. Here we see some traditional types of uncoated chopsticks used by the imperial family at official events and rituals. In 2019, when Emperor Naruhito was enthroned, guests from around the world used uncoated chopsticks at a celebratory banquet. I hear that there are special chopsticks used specifically for osechi. Why can't you use normal everyday chopsticks? What's the reasoning there? The chopsticks people use for osechi were originally used in Shinto rituals. Religion has led to many different chopstick styles. In time, those styles were adopted by the general public for eating special meals. Eventually, all kinds of different chopsticks were developed for different purposes and occasions. I see you've prepared a variety of chopsticks here. What are, what are the differences here? The pair on the left is cypress, the middle two are cedar, and on the right we have willow. Tell me about these. This is a very interestingly shaped pair. They're called tensoge and they're modeled on the X-shaped rafters you can see on shrines. That's the idea. No, you're right. I can definitely see that this resembles the decoration on the top of a Shinto shrine. This rounded willow pear is used for osechi. Is there some reason for the choice of the wood used for this? Willow leaves appear early in the spring. That and other features give willow an image of vitality and purity. It's an auspicious choice. Osechi is an occasion where people share a meal with the protective household deity. One end of the chopsticks is for the deity, and the other is for yourself. That's why double-ended chopsticks are used. Ah, now that you mention it, yes. Both ends are pointy. Thank you so much for showing me your chopsticks here. I had no idea how deeply that they were connected to Japanese religion and culture. 
Matt leaves the chopstick specialist and heads to his next destination. He's going to try making an origami chopstick rest. An expert will show him how it's done. So my question is, as of course, in Japan, they sell lots of different types of chopstick rests mm -hmm. that are made out of uh, ceramic. So why make one out of origami? In Japan, this is how you serve sweets to a guest. They're sitting on a piece of folded paper, see? Uh, so this is a type of origami too? Yes. This one single fold embodies great hospitality. It's like going that little extra mile for yeah. the other person. So what are we going to make today? For the start of a year, a crane is perfect. They're said to live for a thousand years. Okay. Matt will be using eye-catching red and gold paper. Hold it there and push it back. Ooh, very nice. It's like a trick. <laughs> Look carefully, see? It comes up. Yes, you're doing great. Okay. Put your finger in. Ah, I see. The head kind of goes inside. <laughs> Nicely <laughs> done. I did it! And that's how you make a crane chopstick rest. I love the contrasting colors, the gold and the red. Thank you for showing me how to do this. Don't mention it. In Japan, New Year's festivities are all about bringing together family and friends. And it's little touches like these special origami chopstick rests for holding up special New Year's chopsticks that make the day even more special. I hope today you learned a new way to make your own New Year's celebrations a little more festive. See you next time. As lifestyles have changed, so too has Osechi. This 48-dish set, created by a luxury restaurant, exemplifies a modern demand for diversity. Another recent trend is to replace the traditional multi-tiered box with a Western dinner plate. Dessert-only selections are now available, featuring everything from apple pie to chestnut cream. Another new idea is Osechi for One, aimed at people living by themselves. You can even buy Osechi items at convenience stores for just 100 yen a pack. These days, a variety of ready-made food is sold in small quantities. Items like this are very popular now. I can understand that. I mean, you have maybe just young couples or even people living alone, but when New Year's comes around, they want to have some of this traditional food. So I guess this is, this is the age that we're living in now that Japan's population is both graying and on the decline. There's so much choice. You can select exactly what you want and think of your own way to present it. In fact, that's what we have here, isn't it? It's, some of these have been laid out in a very attractive way. You can't tell that it came from those inexpensive packs, can you? You could easily mistake it for homemade food. Good presentation turns it into something special. It's a special occasion after all. These days, you can't just tell people to make everything themselves. That's such an old-fashioned idea. But no matter how good it looks, when you start eating, you can still tell that it's pre-bought. It would be wonderful if people prepared a few dishes themselves, even just one or two, and add them to their osechi. You could put them together and arrange them nicely.
Then you could take photos and upload them to social media. You could tell the world, I made this, and if your creation drew attention, it would introduce a new element to the world of Osechi. Well, as we've already seen, we started off with the very traditional things and then other things got added in over the years. So presumably that process will continue into the future as well. Traditions shouldn't be passed down as is. They should change and evolve to suit each new generation. That kind of adaptation is important. Having said that, I think that people in Japan will always eat osechi at the new year. That tradition will persist. It's such an important custom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In December, osechi cooking classes are held. They are a popular way to learn about customs. Today's lesson will be on preparing traditional osechi with a twist. We'll use creative seasonings and techniques. Some participants want to learn how to make osechi so they can pass the tradition on to their children. A renewed interest in classic seasonal foods is spreading among people in their 20s and 30s. They want to know how to prepare items like black soybeans and simmered vegetables. If you arrange it like a traditional Japanese garden with larger ingredients towards the back, it will look fantastic. For people who have only ever bought osechi, the idea of making it from scratch can be very appealing. The new year is an important occasion in Japan. So I want to make part of the osechi meal myself, even if it's just a single dish. My brother lives abroad, but he's coming back to Japan for the new year holidays. It's been a long time since the family has all been together, so I want to share a wonderful handmade osechi meal. For Japanese, January the 1st just wouldn't be the same without the taste of osechi. Next time, a Japanophile's profile. We meet Irishman Peter Macmillan, an acclaimed translator of classical Japanese poetry.